So, so how do you get started building a guitar? How do you start? How do you start? Well, I, I brought some uh, uh, paraphernalia with me tonight. Just to these are these are bits and chunks and pieces of things just laying around the shop, uh, just to show you how I uh, kind of go about doing things. I guess the wood is the number one thing that you, you have to worry about. The wood is is one of the hardest parts of uh, of building a guitar. You have to find uh, the right wood, and the right wood is very, very, very hard to find. Uh, this is a uh, this is a piece of uh, of coca bolo. It comes uh, from the rainforest in um, in Central America. Those people that are always marching around campus about the rainforest, this would be what it was about. Um, <laughs> and 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 Jerry actually mugged one of them. That's where he got the wood. Uh, here we have have a volunteer. So we need a volunteer from the crowd. Come up. Describe this. It's heavy. Very, very heavy. Uh, moderately smooth. The heavy part was the part I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> this is, uh, I'll tell you what we'll do, we'll pass this around the room. Uh, this piece of wood is not, it probably has the density of some steel. It takes about an hour and a half to cut this piece of wood with a, with a bandsaw that I have that dims the lights in the neighborhood when you turn it on. Um, <laughs> And you have to feed this thing through a bandsaw very, 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 very slowly. As a matter of fact, it starts smoking uh, as, you, uh, as you push it through there. And this just got to kind of give you a sense of, uh, you pass that around, let everybody kind of feel of it. The idea is that you want to cut it down until you have it into slices that are like this thick. And so this is a piece of Brazilian Dalbergia Negra, which has cost about as much money as gold per ounce. This is about worth about as much as gold per ounce. Uh, this, is, uh, this piece of wood is legal uh, because it was cut down prior to 1982 when it was made illegal to have it in the United States. The, uh, if you have this piece of wood and you go through customs, in most European countries they will, they will confiscate it from you in the same way they confiscate uh, ivory. Uh, this is a nine inch wide piece of, uh, of, of Dalbergia Negra and uh, that's, uh, in order for this to have come off of a tree, the tree would have had to have been, you have the core wood and the, the heart, would, the, the core of the tree, and then you have the, the bark that's on the tree. This white stuff is where the bark's, there's a piece of wood that's about that far out, and then you have the bark that's on the tree. And so I counted the rings on this particular uh, piece of wood here. This tree was 135 years old uh, when it caught on fire in Brazil. Uh, the reason that I have it is because the tree caught on fire. Uh, it burned the outside of the tree and it, uh, and it uh, melted the pulp of the, in the middle of the tree, killed the tree. Uh, but the, the heart wood of the, of the guitar uh, survived. The, this stuff here is just fine. And so this tree would have had to have been that big around to get this piece of wood out of there. And so this piece of wood is, is very, 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 very valuable to me. Uh, somebody, you can, uh, somebody steals that other piece of wood, I don't care. This piece of wood, I would care. And so you, uh, <laughs> and so you slice it into, uh, into uh, two pieces. And I brought the wrong two pieces, of course. Uh, but you, basically what you want to do is book match them. And I brought the wrong two ones. These are not exactly book matched. But you want to book match them and put them together. And then when you book match them, it, it basically, basically that's how you make the back. You glue this together and it makes the back. And so the, the two of them together make, make the back. Here's another. Now, is there a difference in the wood she would use for the back and say the sides and yeah, top? Yeah, the, the, the wood on the back of the guitar determines how, uh, how the guitar is going to sound in terms of what reflects. The top of the guitar produces the tone that you're going to hear, uh, and it produces 100% of the tone. Virtually 100% of the tone is coming from the top vibrating. We'll talk about that in a second. The sound comes off of the top of the guitar and hits the bottom of the guitar. And whatever wood is on the bottom absorbs some frequencies and then reflects other frequencies. Rosewood is normally the one that most people prefer because it absorbs a little bit of treble but reflects all the bass. So a, a, a rosewood guitar is almost always a very deep, mellow, rich sounding guitar. Mahogany 
tends to absorb base and reflect treble. Uh, maple tends to, tends to, re, to absorb uh, treble and bass and produce a real mid rangey kind of sound. Jazz players love uh, maple back guitars because maple back guitars tend to have, uh, tend to have sort of a mid rangey uh, sort of sound to them. So yeah, it makes a big difference. It makes a huge difference in how the guitar sounds. And so, like, you can buy, um, I didn't bring it. You can, you can buy uh, uh, rosewood that's grown in India in, uh, pl around plantations. They have tree planta they have these uh, tea plantations. And around the edge of these tea plantations, they plant rosewood trees to provide shade that goes over the, over the, uh, uh, over the tea plants to keep them from, uh, from burning up with the heat. The problem with that wood uh, is, is that it gets a lot of nutrients, it gets a lot of water, it's kind of taken care of. This stuff that grows out in the, for <clears throat> out in the forest, out in the, in the jungle, you know, has to be so hard that an insect can't eat it. You see, that's why it survives. If it were soft in any way, form, or fashion, the insects would eat it and it would die. And so, the, uh, and, and so this wood is very, 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 very hard. So native growth ro rosewood is, is the, the preferred uh, wood that, that you want to have. Uh, this is a better example of book matching. You can see how these two pieces of wood came right off the tree right next to each other. You see how the grain matches? Okay. The, so when I cut this, this, these two pieces of wood were like this, and then I ran a saw down through the middle of them, you know, so that they yielded that. And so this will become the sides of the guitar. That's what, that's what this is made for. All right. So this will become the sides, and that over there will become the back. The sides of the guitar don't make any difference as far as I know, or very little difference in how the guitar sounds. Uh, you just want this to be the same, to look the same, as the, uh, as the, as the wood that goes on the, uh, on the back of the guitar. You want those to match, so that it's, it's just aesthetically pleasing. This affects the sound. This doesn't. You just want this to be aesthetically pleasing. So this is, you know, two, uh, you know I can sell these, two, these four pieces of wood for probably, I don't know, $4,000. And now you know why the really fancy guitars are expensive. Yeah. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of people find it interesting uh, how you take, uh, this is Indian rosewood here, uh, how you take those two sides and bend them so that they look like, so they look like a guitar side. Now these are two book matched uh, pieces of rosewood here. Now, I, to show you, I, I thought I'd just demonstrate to you a little bit about how this sort of works. This is a piece of scrap rosewood, and uh, this is an iron. This is 350 degrees. And so what you do, if I can get where I put some pressure on it, it's normally nailed down on a... You uh, want me to hold uh, it okay, for I'll just sit here for a second. We'll just be patient. So what you do is you put the piece of wood on there, and... Uh, you try everything you can to be patient. Patience is not my virtue. Um, and you just get it hot. It's, uh, and over time, it's, to make a, to bend a pair of sides takes, oh, probably about 15 minutes, something like that, to bend it. Now, do you overbend them sometimes? You have to overbend them because the nature wants it to come out, uh, go right back to where it was. And so it will, it will try as best it can uh, to go right back where it was. So you, you see how it's already bent? Okay. And so what you do is you bend the sides you know, where they look like this. Now, this is, I have a form at, at home that has this bend in it. You know, so I bend the wood and then put it in the form so it, so it stays there. Now, I've already bent uh, 75 or 80 sets of sides. I have 80 sets of sides already set back. And the reason is to bend it, you kind of have to get it wet, and wet is uh, uh, moisture is the enemy of a good guitar. You don't want to ever build one. You don't. You want to build it when the wood's got any moisture in it whatsoever. And so I have I already have these things drying, so that 15, 20 years from now they'll be uh, uh, they'll be ready to go. So, so how do you manage building good guitars in New Orleans? Uh, you, you, it's not ideal, but you just do the best you can. But, you know, it's just all I can do, unless I want to go move to the desert. But the good news about building a guitar in New Orleans, if you build a guitar when it's humid, and then you send it somewhere where it's dry, uh, well, when you send it to somewhere where it's humid, that's okay. If you send it to somewhere it's dry, 
you kind of have to allow for that when you're building it. Um, so ended up, um, what you do next is you take the, um, uh, you, what's called the, um, this is the neck, the, the, uh, the neck plate. And what this is, is I copied Martin up on this one. You, you make these things and this is, you glue this to the front of the guitar and this is where the neck is going to set in the guitar. The sides go around here and then the bottom, uh, the, the, uh, uh, then the bottom of the guitar goes to this. So you glue the sides up and then I wind up making things like this. This is just a jig that I made uh, to, hold, to hold one in place while I'm working on it. Let me take this out of here. It has to be under a lot of pressure to hold it. So, this is the, they call this the rib of it, rib of the body. So you glue the, the neck plate in here, and this is the, uh, the rear plate, the heel plate. And uh, the heel plate, um, I try to choose wood that's got a little bit of tone to it when I build them. <clears throat> this is, uh, and I get most of that off the street. Uh, this was somebody's countertop um, that they threw out on Pine Street. And I was kind of tapping on it. <clears throat> it had a nice sound to it. You know, so I chopped this up, you know, <laughs> to make the heel plate. So if you see someone going through your garbage <laughs> tapping the wood, it's... Oh, my neighbors think I'm so weird. I, I'll, uh... <laughs> Here in New Orleans, people take 100-year-old pieces of cypress that, used to, that, was a, that was a baseboard or a crown molding, and they throw it in the trash. That's a 100-year-old piece of cypress. I mean, it's done what it's going to do. And for bracing wood, oh, man, hard to beat. And so I buy, I, I, no, I just walk down the street, you know, I go through people's, I see something in a trash can, I'll tap on it because I want to, there's a difference between I, what I call thunk thunk wood and ding ding wood. A uh, ding ding wood has a sound to it. A uh, thunk thunk wood just goes, uh, uh, you know, th there's nothing to it. But ding ding wood kind of has a little tone to it, and you want to put as much wood in here as it's got tone in it as you can. Now, you've, you've got some curfing around the edges there, too. Yeah. And this stuff, you, you just buy this stuff. This is what it looks like. And you, you, it's, it's flexible. It bends, and you, uh, you just put it around the side of the guitar and glue it. You uh, glue this on with... Uh, with uh, uh, clothes pins, take clothes pins, put a little glue on there, and glue it on there. And that provides the surface that you're going to glue the top to and the back to. Okay, so that gives you the, that's the surface that holds the guitar together. Actually, this little bit piece of what they call purple. Yeah, but anyway, so th things like this you have to build. You, know, you can't buy something like this. And so I use this jig, you know, to hold the, the body in place, you know, while it's drying. And I use this, the, the jig to glue the, the top and the, and the back of it together. So this now, did allows me to glue it, glue it easily. 